Hi there, my name is Adam Fielding and welcome to another one of my music making streams. So tonight I'm going to be making something kind of similar to in vibe to what I was doing last week. I thought it'd be kind of nice to try doing something uh, a bit more, not so much up tempo, but something kind of with a chilled vibe, but with a with a bit of an up tempo feel to it. So not not drum and bass basically. Maybe maybe I'll do that again in a future stream. But tonight, just feel like it's it's kind of nice and summery. Uh, so let's 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 kind of capitalize on this and do something something nice and and sort of light and refreshing. So. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do in that, in that case, I'm just going to bump the tempo up to, let's say, like 115 BPM. That's kind of a nice starting point. Um, so one thing I've been doing recently is I've been using Monotone, which is the bass synth that comes with Reason. And I've been using that kind of a lot as not a bass synth, basically. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to, to sort of extend that, uh, that sort of way of thinking and just kind of take it to its logical progression, really. So I decided to uh, set up a combinator, which I'll just dip into now. So if I go into my patches folder and it's in tools, I believe, I've got this uh, monotone poly. So basically what I've done is I've just created a bunch of instances of monotone, so it's four instances here. And that's, I'm using the distributor rack extension so I can use it as a polyphonic patch. So if I play it now. So that's kind of nice. Nice to, to be able to, to use this sort of monophonic bass synth for something that's totally not monophonic and totally not bassy. So you may have noticed on the combinator itself, it's I've got a wave knob so I can just kind of change the waveforms on the fly. So that's the sawtooth wave. So yeah, you just kind of cycle through all of them. So that is a triangle wave. So if we just go up, that's... That's a nice sine wave. So I'll probably stick with the... Uh, that's a pulse wave. So I'll stick with the uh, the sawtooth wave for today. So I'm just going to um, just kind of adjust my levels here. That's a bit loud at the moment, so I'll just bring that down. Uh, one thing I should probably do uh, before I get started is create an instance of um, the M-Class Maximizer because I just realized I'm not actually going through any post-mix effects at the moment. So I'm just going to hook that up directly to the master out. So that's literally the last thing that everything is going into. So the the limiter is the last thing that all of the audio is going through before it hits the, or, uh, the hardware output. So I'm just gonna turn on the four millisecond look ahead there. And let's give it a, let's give it like a, like a sort of three dB output gain. So there we go. So, nice and summary, Dravis said, nice and summary, it's going to be like 115 Fahrenheit, 45C, it. damn, everything's on fire and it's humid as well, and we have a crazy heat warning. Greetings from California, oh my god, yeah, I, I, I saw some pretty staggering figures from uh, from Phoenix, which is not massively surprising because it's Phoenix, and Phoenix is, is just a crazy place. Um, but yeah, it was like, I think it was like two in the morning and someone was reporting it was like 38 Celsius over there, which is absurd. I don't know what that is in American values in, in freedom Fahrenheit, but I, th I think it's, it was like, I don't know, who knows, freedom figures. So yeah, just to explain what's actually going on here. So I have the distributor, which is a rack extension by Blamsoft. And that basically per key press cycles through these four monotone instances that I've got here. So if we flip the rack around, you can see there's lots of cables going to the CV inputs on each device. So distributor is basically taking the input from the combinator and taking the gate and note values, uh, CV values, and spitting them out to the appropriate uh, devices as needed. So if you have a look at the top, you'll be able to see it cycling from one to four. So you may have noticed I could have created eight instances, but for the sake of brevity, I haven't done that today. Um, but I feel like I'm probably not going to need more than four today. I'm not going to be going crazy with the with sort of huge chords or anything like that. But it's kind of nice to it's nice to be able to play monotone as a polysynth, basically. So something else I picked up recently is um, this nifty little dial called the Surface Dial. So it's like a just a it's literally what it sounds like. It's just a tiny little little dial that you can connect to your computer. And with some software, you can kind of, you can hover over anything. And you'll have to imagine that my mouse pointer disappears because in OBS it doesn't. Um, so in the stream it won't disappear. But for me, it disappears and basically lets me control the, uh, 
whatever knob I'm whatever dial or whatever I'm hovering over like magic which is kind of neat so for recording automation that's actually incredibly useful it, it probably looks incredibly sim simplistic if you can see the mouse pointer but for just kind of playing stuff it's pretty neat um, so I imagine I'll probably be using that a bit when I actually work on this track so yeah, that's pretty much it really. So I've got kind of a nice sort of simple patch going here. There's a bit of reverb, a bit of delay. So I was thinking for today's track, maybe um, dial up the, the reverb time, but kind of dial it back on this little mixer here. So we have a nice, a nice long reverb tail, but it's not, there's not too much going on in the actual mix itself. So that's nice. So I've also got this echo here. So I might turn the feedback up a bit and that actually looks pretty, pretty solid to me. So I'll probably just leave that alone. So I'm just kind of thinking. That'll do. That's kind of a, I feel like that's a nice, nice starting place. So I'm just gonna head over to the sequencer if I press the correct function key and just start drawing in some notes really. So I'm just gonna create a nice four bar section here. Um, and yeah, let's let's just draw it. So that was a nice, nice sort of starter, starter chord there. So let's adjust the velocity there and that should be kind of a yeah, that's that's good uh, hmm so yeah let's have let's have an extra f on the top there That's kind of a nice, a nice sort of starting, starting place. Um, so again, that's that's literally just a monotone, you know, a nice, nice little bass synth, which I'm totally not using as a bass. Um, and yeah, that's that's kind of kind of nice already. So I'm just going to open up the tool window and just adjust the velocity of all those notes by just using the random velocity button here. So I'll randomize them by twenty percent of their respective values. And um, let's uh, let's change this up. In fact, I might try slowing this down a bit. That seems a bit... So let's randomize those as well. I might... Of that. Actually, no. I, I I liked it kind of the the sort of more rapid feel to it that I had going before. So let's just uh, let's have a little play with that. Um, in fact, what I might do, yeah, let's let's give that time to breathe. Actually, no, no, let's, let's leave that. So I think I'm obsessing over this a little too much. So I'm just going to kind of, kind of leave that alone. And in fact, I think I'm going to halve that. Yeah, I think that'll, that'll sound nice. So let's let's just loop that for a little bit. That's a, that's a nice little start. So what I might do is, um, while I've got this open, I might just record some 
some automation on the filter frequency. Just kind of see where that goes. So if I just hit record on my keyboard, hopefully that'll work. leave that as it is and just join that up cool so let's get some let's get some drums going so as has been suggested I am actually going to fire up an instance of oomph and see where we go with that so oomph club drums and I'm just going to drop in my own samples. So let's uh, let's head into the old Evolve Free folder. So I'm going to want a kick to start with. So I'm thinking something something nice with a bit of weight but nothing too too heavy. So it's a bit too deep. I think that could work nicely. So let's just have that. So let's uh, let's adjust the uh, amplitude of that. So I'm just going to play a simple uh, on the floor pattern there and then adjust the levels accordingly so so that's a, that's a good start so if I go to chop Let's have a, oh yeah, I don't want to use that. <laughs> totally forgot how that worked for a second. So, so yeah, I'm just gonna, just gonna leave that as it is. And uh, let's just get rid of that. And I'm gonna draw in just some, uh, let's get like a nice little groove going, so. ASM has asked, is the echo in tempo sync? It is, there's quite a lot of diffusion going on, so it kind of drifts from each note as you play it, which I, I kind of like. Um, but I might dial that back a bit, because that is a bit intense. I'm actually thinking I'm not massively feeling uh, using oomph today. Uh, what I might do is I'm just gonna I'm gonna not. Oops, didn't mean to do that. I'm not gonna create two instances of them, but I'm just gonna knock that on the head for today, um, and just stick with uh, redrum for today. Uh, I was using kick 38. That's good to know. So kick 38, just so I can quickly dial back the um, the kick a bit. So I may bust out oomph again for another stream, but I just kind of feel like today I just kind of want to keep it. Keep it simple. And let's uh, let's add an extra kick on the end of that. And that's kind of a, a nice start there. Uh, Ty Blue has said, I'm a bit late this evening and now I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, me, me too, me too. I, I, I don't know what's going on. So... <laughs> so let's just adjust that last note as well. So let's, let's, um, I'm just going to dip into my usual setup here with going to the effects folder here and just dip into eavedrums with no sidechain compression. So I might dial back 
Um, so this is just a, a simple Eve MP5 EQ going into the polarizer and then into this limiter here with the threshold set to about minus three dB. So I might actually dial back um, the squash a bit on the polarizer. I'm gonna adjust my levels again. I might also turn on the high pass filter on that monotone there. Create an instance. Well, let's let's have a snare. So I'm thinking for for today's track, it'd be nice to have kind of a snare with a. I'll do. <laughs> a snare with a bit of weight behind. It, I was going to say. I might um dial back the the length a bit there. Actually, I quite liked it with the the longer tail there. So uh, I'll create a new note lane for that. I'm no doubt going to be using uh, blocks at some point. So better to to preempt myself there. Just keep that nice and simple. So I'm going to use my old trick of just having the kick and the snare being played by stuff that I've programmed myself. Uh, bring in a hat and I'm going to start um, using beatmap. That sounds pretty, pretty solid so... Let's, let's have a really clicky, clicky hat. I'm going to start using beatmap just to kind of sequence the hats and some extra percussion. So I'm going to dial back the kick and snare, just leave the hat density and the percussion density as they are. Uh, go to the lava map, that seems to be a nice, a, a nice spot for, for stuff like this, and just click on spawn x, y, let's have some random values. Let's have some, some extra percussion in there as well. So if I go to the percussion folder and just let's have let's have that, let's have that, and just reduce the length. And <laughs> I think lots of questions about my knob. This is a I feel like this is a first for, for these streams. But anyway, yes, I was talking about this um, this thing that I picked up quite recently, which is called the Surface Dial. It looks a bit like a hockey puck, I guess. It's just like this little little dial thing. Um, and with some software called Elephant, um, you can basically hover over any parameter or anything, not just in Reason, but in uh, you can use it in Photoshop or anything that uses kind of sliders or faders or anything like that. And you can just literally just control it using using the dial. Um, on OBS, you'll be able to see the mouse pointer actually moving in relation to where the, the dial is, is turning. But using it here, I can't see the mouse pointer. It's kind of neat. It kind of, it does feel a bit, bit magical when I use it. But um, yeah, I feel like the the magic is dispelled somewhat. If you can see the mouse pointer flying around, it's uh, it's really cool. So there we go. I'm just going to leave that as it is. So I use that to um, I use that to automate the filter frequency on this monotone patch here. Travis says lots of questions about my knob might be my favorite thing Adam has said. Well, you know, gotta gotta keep it highbrow. I'm a, I'm a highbrow kind of guy. So, right. Um, anyway, moving on. I, I feel like I need some some percussion. So something else I really wanted to do this week was something I sort of touched upon in a recent-ish stream, which was using Kong to trigger semi-random uh, percussion notes, really. So I'm going to create an instance of Kong and just stick in a Nana Nano sampler and open that up. I'm just going to go into the drum supply folder, go into the percussion folder, and I feel like this is a, a good place to go. I'm just going to drag all of those into the NN19, then click this magic button here labeled Alt. So now if I press this, it's just going to trigger a bunch of random samples every time I trigger that particular pad, which is not so useful at the moment. So I'm going to reduce the decay of that massively and now we just have lots of lots of clicks. So, so what I'm going to do is just use the high pass filter on the SSL mixer to roll off the lows massively because I just want th those clicks. Uh, I'm going to turn the master level up there and turn the level up here. So it should be a nice nice bit of pop there. Um, so uh, Buskin Bills has said new glitch trick. I I will get to actually properly glitching them up properly in a second. Um, 
But, but, uh, for now, it means I can just, just drag in individual notes. And there we go. Nice and straightforward. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. Very, very simple pattern. So I'm just going to continue triggering that and I'm going to adjust the mixer level because that's quite loud for, for what it is at the moment. Again, I might roll the lows off a bit more there. So something I haven't used for a few weeks is something that isn't included in Reason, which is a bit of a bummer, but it was, yes, bongos, it's been a while, <laughs> is um, something I haven't used in a couple of weeks, but recently went on sale, um, which I imagine was a bit of an insult to people who recently upgraded because now it's on sale for less than the upgrade price. But that aside, um, I'm gonna use Stutter Edit 2. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting to use evolution to trigger individual gestures in Stutter Edit 2. So we just basically have this kind of semi-automated glitching machine of sorts. So I'm gonna open a gesture bank called, um, none of those, I believe it was here, Trap Beats, which despite its name is good for stuff other than Trap Beats. So it goes from C2 to sort of just over C3, so G sharp three. So I might just set it to C, set evolution to between G2 and, oh, that's a point. Um, so I'm gonna have to bring stutter edit out of the insert section there because it's an effect unit. You can't actually attach a player to it. So that's a bit, bit annoying. There is a way around this, of course. So you can just combine it, stick in a combinator. So I'm just putting that in a combinator there and make sure that it's set up to receive notes. So now Stutter Edit 2 will receive notes from the Combinator and then attach a player to the Combinator. So it's a bit of a workaround, but you, know, you kind of have to have to deal with this. So, right, so I'm gonna set the repeats to one and now it'll trigger notes between C2 and C3 and I'm just gonna press play and see what happens. Yeah, so Buskinville said, did you sort the volumes out? I did not, <laughs> so this will be interesting. I believe the, the particular bank I've chosen is more about chopping up individual sections rather than applying a load of effects. So fingers crossed it shouldn't affect the amplitude too much. But yeah, turn your volume down just in case. In fact, I will probably do the same. So here we go. So you can kind of hear those extra sort of glitchy bits playing there. So there we go, it just adds kind of a nice extra little flourish to proceedings and was minimal effort on my part. So win-win, really. I might reduce the delay a bit more on that. So it's amazing what you can get from just a bunch of random percussion sounds and some random stutter editing. Now the cool thing about that is because it's set up like that, I could just copy and paste that onto anything else I create get some extra glitches going on some extra percussion channels. Also, you can automate the amount of glitching but essentially by just adjusting the density of the evolution play here. So if I just stick it on 100%, it'll just be glitching constantly. Which is kind of neat, not really what I'm going for. I'm just gonna make sure that's actually, you can still see it triggering all of these gestures here. So that's a bit much at the moment, so I might just dial that back to 50%. That seemed like a good, good spot to start with. So nice, nice cheeky, cheeky uh, percussive stutters going on there. So again, that's just using percussive elements from the factory sound bank. So I'm going to call that glitchy percussion. I've just realised I've not actually been labelling any of my mix channels. So let's let's do that now. So I'll just leave that monotone poly alone. And good. I might actually turn the filter envelope down a bit on that. Right, so we've got lots of stuff going on here. I feel like it'd be nice to add an extra kind of layer to that snare as well. So I'm just gonna go into the Evolve Free folder here and go into the Claps folder here and just grab, oh, that's a bit much for me. Um, so that's more like it. Something kind of layered and kind of snappy. 
Oh, save warning. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> right. Let's let's get this saved. There we go. Um, cool. Right. So that's that's saved. Just press the old Control S, and right. I'm going to add that to. I'm basically just going to create a new note lane. Copy the snares. Transpose those notes up by two semitones. So now the claps should play over the top. which isn't exactly what I want at the moment. So I'm going to use Groove Mixer channel A1 set to those claps. And I'm going to go to the Groove Mixer and slide A1 back just a little bit. I don't want it to be too slippery. Um, increase a bit of random timing there. And that should give it kind of a slightly looser feel. So I'm going to tighten that up by just reducing the length a bit there. Travis said that's a really like sloppy clap. Those are my favorite and I think they're hard to make sound right. Yeah, I, I, I'm a fan of that kind of sort of clap sound. I'd really like them to have a nice sort of slow lead in as well, like a really nice sloppy uh, clap there. It sounds more seedy than I was expecting. But um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really nice sound. And it's like you said, it's, it is kind of hard to get right, especially multi-layered like this. Normally you'd have to layer up sort of three different clap samples to get that kind of thing. So. So if we just mute the, the snare, that's kind of nice. So I imagine I'll, I'll probably bring in the snare later in the track um, when I get working. So we've got some, we've got some kicks, we've got some snares, we've got some claps, we've got this extra percussive element thing here. Um, so also I realized I've got a combinator channel here, which I don't really need. So I feel like we need, we need something kind of atmospheric. So something else that I haven't done for a while is use grain to create a pad. So um, one thing I've, I really like using grain for is just dipping into the factory sound bank and dipping into the other samples folder and the chords, phrases, pads, stabs. So I want something here that isn't an obvious chord because that's gonna be really hard to fit into the track that I'm working on. So basically that's not gonna work. So I want something that's essentially either a single note or octaves basically. And if memory serves me, um, there is something octave hall. That's a, I feel like that would be a really good basis for a pad there. So I'm going to just adjust the view view window there so I can see most of the sample and adjust the start and end. So we're getting most of the body of the patch there and change the loop to forward backwards. I'm going to enable global position so it will just sweep through the, the patch as the, the, trunk, the song progresses. And yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, Monkey++ has said, just waiting for a good sale on Stutter Reddits and Avit. I believe there is a good sale on at the moment, um, which again, I don't want this to turn into like a, a promo piece for Isotope, but there we go. It's there's, I think there's a sale on at the moment. I could be wrong. I think it's on Plugin Boutique. Um, but anyway, I'm going to adjust the amp envelope of this particular pad. So it's a bit harsh at the moment, so I might actually bring that down a bit. I'm um, going to increase, I'm going to decrease the speed and increase the jitter. Something I haven't done is set the uh, root key to the detected key. It is C1 at the moment, so I'm, I'm actually just going to leave it as, as it is because it's set to C3 and analyze at C1. I, I think that's fine. So that's a, that's a good start. I might increase the pan spread as well so we get kind of more of a spread sound with that pad. Um, and I might turn the speed down a bit more as well. And I'm gonna, also going to stick that through a bit of DR1. It hadn't actually added any DR1 outside of this combinator over here, which I already had pre-prepared. So I'm actually going to just dial in a bit of reverb. So that's a, a nice start. I might also add a bit of delay. So let's have an instance of the echo um, going there. Oh, scanning contents of my patch library. That's not particularly useful. It's just an instance of echo. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to dial that back a bit, uh, turn the feedback up a bit. 
and let me turn the filter up. Have a bit of ping pong going on there. So that's kind of a nice place to start. So I'm going to create a scales and chords player and try to remember what key I was playing in. So that's F something. Um, so I'm going to try F. Uh, Phrygian is normally a good place to start. So I'm just going to basically just play some F keys. That sounds about right. Um, just play two F notes there. Let's have a third one there and then I believe it goes to A sharp, uh, C sharp then A. Oh wait, that's that's too quick. So I'm gonna halve the uh, the length of that. Let's try that again. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna use the octave up on the scales and chords here because I quite like the sound of that high note, but I want the body of it to be in a lower octave. So I'm gonna bring everything down an octave, but include an octave up note. So let's try that. pad so I might actually reduce the grain length a bit there. I'll just call that grain pad so I wonder what that sounds like with four notes that's nice I like that I feel like I'm kind of losing some of that pad there, so I'm just going to bring the start position up a bit. Just go with that. So I quite like that. Um, I yeah, I'm gonna leave that on four notes. I quite like that. I'm just. I also like. Oh, I like that. So I'm gonna add some color to that first note, there. Um, maybe just for that. Well, let's 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 play it and and hear how that sounds on the later notes. No, <laughs> that's a that's a hard pass for me. So what I might do is actually extend that over the first section there. So I'm just I'm just playing around with the scales and chords thing here just to kind of get a bit of flavor going on here. Um, some interesting stuff going on in the chat. So I've, I feel like I've kind of neglected the chat during this session. I'm just kind of wrapped up in, in whatever I'm doing. Um, Lots of talk about uh, people picking up um, Reason Suite or waiting for Reason 12. Um, I mean, I, I I can't really comment too much. I'm using Reason Suite 11 and it's awesome. Like, I think it's really, really good. Um, there's some stuff in there that I use all the time, like Beatmap. I'm not sure if that's included in regular Reason 11, but that's awesome. I use it all the time. Um, and some of the extra stuff like Radical Piano, if you don't have that already, that's a great addition. Although I think that was added in Reason 10. Um, there's also, I've got to remind myself what's actually in there now. So <laughs> let's let's have a look. So layers, that's kind of neat. I haven't really used that that much during these sessions though. Uh, Reason Electric Bass, that's really neat. Uh, drum Kits is pretty cool. Radical Keys is nice as well. Oomph, which I need to use more during one of these. Complex is awesome. Uh, Complex is really, really good if you're kind of more of a sound design synth kind of nerd, which is awesome. Um, so yeah. I'd, I'd say it's kind of worth it for complex one alone, but that's just me. Um, 
the other stuff is kind of gravy really but the, i'm pretty sure there's some some other stuff in there but I, I feel like i've just kind of become accustomed to what's in there which is nice um master bus compressor uh, is detached as asm has said i think i think that's included in the regular version of reason 11 but that is incredibly useful i really really like that having the um the the ssl compressor and eq and stuff broken out as separate devices it's kind of one of those things that's kind of made me think why didn't they do that sooner that's incredibly useful so yeah that's a nice addition um so yeah just just lots of little things anyway i was I, I automated open cores. I haven't done anything with it, so I'm just I'm just going to stick it on on one of these notes and see what happens. Hmm. So yeah, I, I think that's, that'll do. That's that's kind of a nice. kind of coming along nicely I think I think what we really need is some bass because I've just realized there's a total lack of low end here so I'm, I'm gonna leave that pad alone I like that as it is but again that's just that's created from a very sort of a, a sample in factory soundbank that's just this thing um, so it creates a really nice uh, pad texture I think proper kind of glassy texture which I I really like um, so, Travis said, who does this remind me of right now? Mom. Oh, it's been a while since I listened to, to any of their stuff. I need to get back on that train. I really liked it. Um, Tom I said, well, is Complex really that great against the Legend or other VST? It's completely different to the Legend. Um, I'd say the reason I don't tend to bring it out so much during these streams is because it's very much, it's, I tend to treat it as its own environment, essentially. It's, it's much more of a sit down and use it and kind of see what pops out and you get some amazing sounds out of it. Some of the presets are phenomenal. Um, but it's it's not something I, I will just drop into a track as I'm working on it and be like, okay, I'm going to create a patch from scratch using Complex. It's, it is kind as Drabbit said, it's kind of its own workflow idea sort of thing. It's very much, you get kind of sucked into it. And it's great when, like, when you get something really cool pop out, it, it sounds like nothing else in reason. So I can't really compare it to the legend because it's, it's apples and oranges really, but it's, it's very cool. So I'm going to create an instance of VK2 because I feel like I've, I've sort of got distracted here. I was going to create some bass and I'm going to do my usual thing of creating a uh, rectangular uh, bass kind of sound. And I'm just going to turn down the envelope on the filter and use LFO1 to control the shape of the oscillator. slow that down a bit so I feel like I've, I've already got these notes here so I'm just going to copy and paste that from grain so I've just dialed in a bit of drive there I might also turn the filter frequency down a bit So I'm just thinking I might actually dial in, uh, I was thinking of dialing in a bit of unison just to see how that sounds with with a bass. I've got another idea. So I just want a couple of voices, maybe spread that a bit um, and detune that. It's kind of a nice warm spread bass, but I want the, I want the actual low end to be quite focused. So what I'm going to do is create an instance of the M Class Stereo Imager and kind of set that to about 100 hertz or so and properly just set that to mono. So the real low end is very, it's kind of center, it's central in the mix. It's not, whereas the kind of sort of more low mids, mids kind of are just spread out a bit more. I think that'll, that'll work quite nicely. Again, it's kind of hard for me to tell because I'm on headphones, but in theory, I feel like that should work. Um, I feel like that last note could do with maybe going up an octave. So I'm also going to be doing, um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm just catching out, catching up on the uh, on the chat again. I, I feel like I'm sorry, guys. I feel like I'm neglecting you here. Um, so 
Uh, Complex is awesome. Uh, Monkey Plus Plus says it would be fun to have a whole sound design session sometime at Complex. That would be really cool. That's actually a really good idea, and it would be a lot of fun, I think, especially if I came up with something that I could use in another track. Um, so, uh, Dravit has said i'm practicing it for exactly that but i'm not there yet um yeah it's it's i feel like I'd, I'd need to reacquaint myself a bit but it's kind of one of those things where when you're in the right frame when you're in the right mindset it's very easy to get lost in it and it's it's great um vk2 is awesome it was on sale a while ago for for about 20 bucks which uh tom has pointed out um yeah so Ty Blue said, uh, you know, since I go to Reason Suite 11, enabling me to download these project files, you really get to appreciate the skill Adam is applying these issues. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and in such a short time as well. Um, no, I appreciate that. Cheers. I can I can take a compliment. Thank you. Um, all right. So what I'm thinking is maybe just including a little pitch bender. Nice and easy. So very, very kind of simple bass. So what I'm going to do now is something that I've done in several streams now, which is I'm going to break out the kick from that redrum. Just going to create an instance of the spider audio merger and splitter. Bring the kick, which is on channel one, into the splitter. Stick that into the merger, which I'm going to merge with the rest of the redrum and the end result will be no change, it should sound exactly the same. So I'm going to take the um, the kick from the splitter here and bring that into the dynamic section of the bass channel here. Turn on the compressor and that should sidechain with the compressor there. Some talk about scenic in the in the chat. I'm probably not going to get involved in that because I'm not a huge fan, to be honest. I think it's it's pretty much the only device that's been included with Reason so far that I just have not found a use for. Um, that's not to take away from the actual instrument or anything like that, but it's just it is very much not my cup of tea. Um, but that's just me. I'm sure there are plenty of people out there who've been getting some some good use out of it. Um, just realised I don't have any drive on the mixer here. So I just Yeah, Boskin Bill said it's same as layers, both editions, just haven't got into it. I like I, I I like layers, I just don't tend to use it very much. Like whereas with Scenic, I'm just I'm just not a big fan just generally really. It's like I said, it's just it's not my cup of tea. Um but that's you know, whether that says more about me than it does about the instrument, but there we go. there's still some way to go with this so essentially what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to stick this in a block now actually because it's a, it was only a matter of time before I did that um, so I'm going to actually double the length of that block and maybe sort of spice it up with some changes here and there so what I might do is take the that pitch bend out of the first chunk there for instance in fact what I might do is record a whole other uh, just record 16 bars of filter automation for for this monotone poly synth here. So if I just if I can just lock that on, there we go. So that's locked on. So now if I press record, I can just
so there we go, we've got some nice automation recorded there. So I might just take the first part of that because I quite liked the original one I had recorded there and just bring that into the second part there. Maybe tame that initial spike there. Uh, Thomas said, and again, we are at the question that was answered, what are your first instruments to start? Again, I'd, I kind of feel like um, going back to, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but when I first started using Reason, I was using Reason 1, so I was kind of stuck using Subtractor, which is, I feel, a really good place to start because you're kind of limited by what it does, but it is still a pretty capable synth in its own right. Um, but yeah, it kind of it forces you to learn the basics of subtractive synthesis, which you can apply to pretty much anything else. Um, even, you know, wavetable synths and stuff like that. You can apply a lot of the, the same basic principles to a lot of other synths. Um, so I think it's it's really good from an educational perspective. But even then, I'd, I'd say kind of maybe, maybe at this point, monotone is kind of a nice place to start because it's so straightforward. You can't really create a bad sound with it. It. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd say those are kind of a nice place to start. So I might actually swap those two parts around, those filter parts. So I wasn't entirely sold on that. I think maybe that'll work when there's a bit more going on in the uh, in the track. So I feel like it'd be nice to have some extra percussion. So I'm going to dip into my sample library and just get some percussion out, really, because I feel like that's a that's a good place to go. So I'm just going to dip into this folder here, and I've got some tops the bottom, which I think would be a good place. It'd be nice to have some shakers, I think. Let's just drag some, some shakers into the track. Right, so let's, let's give that a go, see how that sits with the rest of the track. Yeah, I'm not super into that. Um, maybe I could try something else. Um, No, I'm not, not super into that either. Um, there we go. Maybe some... I like the idea of having some shakers. I want some shakers in this track, damn it. So I'm going to take that pattern and copy it twice and just... Let's, let's try that. There we go. I like that. So I'm going to put this through an instance of a device I've used a few times before called Beatformer. And this is great to kind of... Um, to sort of just make things sound a bit tighter. So if you roll the squash down a bit, it kind of introduces um, sort of a bit of a gate to the sound. So if I turn it right down, it sounds very kind of stuttery. I kind of like that. It'd be nice to add a bit of air to that as well. Speaking of stuttery, just remembered something else I could be doing. So I'm going to copy my little stutter thing here, paste that onto this channel, and just take the output from the Beatformer, bring that into that combinator there, which has uh, an instance of stutter edit in there, and just create a different seed. So it'll be different stutters, and let's let's give it a go. Okay, so that sounds a bit kind of... I think what we need is something to make that end section just kind of wash over the end of that sample because it just kind of... It just cuts out really, which is really, really unsatisfying. So I'm going to create a, a an aux send here and it's just going to be a nice big reverb. So I'm just going to turn the dry wet up, turn the time up there and just have it kick in during that last little sort of section there. So it just kind of washes over what follows. So that's 
kind of nice. Let's add a nice bit of bit of variety. So I'm just going to call that shakers. I might take the stutter edit off at some point, but we'll we'll see. I feel like I could do with like an extra um, bit of bit of percussion as well. So I'm just going to dip back into my samples folder here and go back into percussion and go into the um, organic electronics folder. I, I quite like these. Um, so. I'm sure there's there's something in here that will that will fit. I think that could be interesting if I mess around with it a bit. So I'm just gonna stick that on its own note lane there. I think that might be a bit much, but we'll we'll see. So if I just turn the squash down again, that should keep things nice and tight. Um, stick that through a high pass filter and and just copy and paste that a few times. In fact, what I might do is take that stutter edit off of the shakers and just bring it into that new percussion I've just created. So I feel like it'd be nice to kind of have the shakers have some more sort of steady semblance of rhythm just to kind of keep things a little grounded there. Whereas that's already quite a process sound, so I feel like it lends itself a bit better to extra glitchiness. start. Um, Tom has just asked, you've been talking about your archive lately Adam, are there some good sound archives which would you recommend for good ratio of price versus quality? So that's actually a really interesting question and I I tend to prefer using sound banks over stuff like, um, like Splice and that kind of thing. Although having said that, um, a lot of these um, instruments are from uh, I uh, from Splice, I think. Basically, um, I like to dip every now and then. I like to dip into various uh, sample banks, like online cloud services, that kind of thing. Just kind of see what pops out. But even then, I tend to kind of grab entire banks and then sort of format them safer into my into my own sample library. So in that regard, Splice is kind of neat. Um, but you kind of you have to really have to sift through a lot of stuff there that I'm not super into. There's a lot of kind of similar things like Loop Cloud is another another good one. Um, but that, that's I guess that kind of works nicely because it means you can try stuff out and see what fits for you. But the problem is it's it's very much I feel like at this point uh, a case of quantity over quality. There's so much stuff out there. It's very hard to sift through it. Um, so outside of those, it's very hard to to say. Like I I tend to stick to to contact for kind of the more the stuff that I know is going to sound really good, um, whereas loops are very much kind of a mixed bag. In this instance, both of these are from Splice. Um, this one's called um, so I've got one by JV's called Organic Electronics, um, one from Origin Sound, which was Elysian Sanctuary Tops. But even then, that that was kind of like I went through those sample banks and picked the stuff that I would like because there was a lot of stuff in there that I I thought oh, I'm not going to use that. So I just didn't didn't bother with that. So it's I'd, I'd say sort of things like Splice and Loop Cloud and that kind of thing are a good place to start in terms of you can just dip in um, and get the stuff that you know is going to work for you. But you kind of I feel like a bit of effort is required on your part to to work out what is going to work for you, and that can take a while to figure out. Um, so yeah, but in terms of things like drum hits, I can't recommend uh, Drumvolution by Wave Alchemy enough. That is a, an amazing drum library. And I've, I use it all the time on my own stuff and production work and that kind of thing. So yeah, that's it's a really good library. So yeah, there we go. So I feel like it'd be nice to add some extra notes to the top of this uh, monotone section. So I'm sort of thinking just like something sort of something higher that will that will work. So 
I just extend the length of those notes and make it easier for me to work with. I might just adjust the velocity of those accordingly. those are a little too harsh at the moment so I might just reduce the velocity of some of those harder notes. So I'm just going to copy and paste that and adjust the velocity of those notes. I'm just I'm going to mute that for now because I'm not entirely sold on that as a as a part. So. I think what we need is some kind of extra um, melodic element. I'm just going to bring the percussion over to the over to another column, so it's kind of out of the way of the bass. Why is that not working? There we go. Right, for some reason my shift key wasn't working. There we go. Right. So I feel like it's been a while since I, I mentioned radical piano um, earlier on. I feel like it's been a while since I actually used that. So I'm going to bring in an instance here. So I'm going to dial that back to a more subdued character, but I'm thinking I might might bring that up a bit um, and turn down the mechanics, uh, turn up the compression and the width um, as I tend to do, set it to a close home ground mic setup combined with a, let's have an upright jazz mic setup. Why not? So <laughs> it'll be interesting. So I'm just basically dialing in a bunch of bunch of settings um, and we'll see how that how that pops out. That certainly is a piano. Right, so I'm gonna, surprise surprise, add a bunch of reverb to that. So yeah, so I'm thinking something kind of similar to what I was trying to do with the monotone poly patch there. I'm just thinking I might start with. Yeah, just I might just do something very similar with this really. Yeah, let's try that. I might adjust the velocity of those notes a bit. And in fact, I might actually turn the character up to something more agitated just because I very rarely do that. So I'm going to create an instance of the echo as well because I feel like I need a bit of delay on that. Um, so I'm just going to turn that stuff, turn the drive up a bit, turn the feedback up a bit, and let's give that a go.
So I'm going to just randomize the velocity of those notes a bit um, and just kind of go with that. Right, so I'm just going to take that and copy and paste that over. Um, just had someone come and say, uh, what door is this? This is Reason 11 Suite. Um, and someone said, but with Adam Fielding sound and rack extensions upgrade. Um, but this upgrade is in the Reason shop. Um, yeah, thankfully, I'm not in the Reason shop. That would, that would be weird. <laughs> Yeah, I think I prefer that over the, the monotone thing. Um, uh, Thomas said, hmm, that piano sound, what about if it if it had, if, what about if next it would sound in harmony? I know exactly what you mean, oddly. I was kind of thinking a similar thing. Uh, Thor Insider said save. Thank you very much for that reminder. It has been a while. So just control S, that's saved. Nice, there we go. So I might create a new note lane and just take those piano notes and just kind of adjust them. Let's give that a go. So I might just copy and paste that. It's quite quite a sort of simple, very simple um, sort of harmony going on there. Um, A, a nice little change there. So I'll just give that a go. <laughs> Hashtag MIDI edit face. Yeah, it's very much a thing. You can just kind of see me going. Yeah, that's that's, that's my midi edit face. <laughs> Thank you. 
sure about that last note. I'm just, I'm just gonna leave that alone. There we go. Right. Um, so yeah, we got, we got the piano. We've got, we got lots of stuff going on here. I feel like we got a block. Let's, let's start making this damn song because I've been messing around with that for a while. So I'm just gonna create uh, an instance of this block, and just, just the first half. I feel actually no, it doesn't really matter. I'll just actually let's have, let's have the first four bars. So it's just playing the same notes. Um, I might do something very similar to what I did. Uh, last week. Um, I might, I'm going to start with the monotone, just that channel there. In fact, if I go into block one, I'm going to unmute that so it's not muted across the track. Um, so yeah, so we've got the monotone. I'm going to mute the drums. I might have some clicky drums come at the start. In fact, the percussion maybe. Um, and let's have the uh, grain come in as well. So it'd be cool if I could do something similar to what I did last week with the grain and just automate the uh, the grain lengths so you get this kind of more sort of jittery sort of effect. So I'm just going to reduce the grain lengths. Um, a type blue was asked me, do you ever not use blocks for arrangement? <laughs> sometimes I don't, sometimes I don't. It depends, like generally speaking, if I want to get an idea down quickly, I will always use blocks because it's a really good way of just getting ideas down and then just kind of going from there. Um, and it kind of tickles the the sort of pattern arrangement part of my brain that I sort of, I started with when I was using trackers and that kind of thing. Um, proximal, proximal Bog 3108Y. Says hi, hi, proximal bog three one zero eight Y. Says, do you have do you have a guitar? I do have a guitar. Um, I haven't. I'm not going to use it today. Um, I've tried using it during one of these streams quite a few weeks ago now, so I feel like I should probably just get over it and and record some more guitar live during these streams. But last time it didn't end so well. Although I actually like how it turned out in the in the final track, but probably not today. Um, so yes, I do have a guitar. I have several next to me, but I'm probably not going to use them today. <laughs> So I can't automate the frequent the filter frequency on the monotone poly, uh, but I can automate the filter envelope amount, which will essentially kind of give it a more muted sound as it plays. So one of the reasons I created all of what have I just done? One of the reasons I created um, these controls on this combinator for the monotone was because I got four instances of monotone actually sort of playing at once in this combinator. So I thought using the combinator dials would be a really easy way of very quickly making changes to the to the actual synth patches itself. Um, Proximal Bog says, make a rock song. I mean, I'm kind of halfway through this one. Maybe at some point in the future I'll, I'll do something kind of with a bit more of a rocky edge, but uh, not today. <laughs> So I'm going to automate the high pass filter on that grain pad so it kind of comes in a bit there. I might also adjust the rate of the grains as well just to kind of give it less of a static feel. So just adjust it like so. So that's kind of a nice start. There we go. Like there's not enough of that high pass filter going in there, so it's not really fading in. I feel like I need a bit more of a fade on that monotone as well. I 
also automate the resonance there as well. And I'm also going to uh, automate the hat and percussion density at the start of the track as well. So I don't want the percussion to come in straight away. Um, so I'll just have that kind of fade in in the second half there. Um, maybe have the hats sort of increase in density as that goes along. Uh, Buskin Bill says filter them kicks in. That's actually not a bad idea. Let's Let's do that. So I'm going to create an instance of channel EQ and just have the kicks go through that there. So I'm just use the low pass filter, automate that and have them fade in nicely. One thing I really want to do with the monotone as well is have it kind of start out really kind of washed in reverb and just have that kind of decrease as that part goes on. So that's going to sound really washy and then... So I think now would be a good time to bring in that bass drone as well. Um, and let's keep this going. I do want that color on that patch there. And I'm just going to copy and paste that first part of the block because I don't want those extra notes to come in at the end just yet. Right, um, so I'm going to automate the filter frequency on that bass as well so I can just kind of fade in just a little bit over that section there as well. Let's have some, some feedback washes on the, the monotone as well. I feel like that'd be quite nice to, to throw in there. So into what I was doing, I, I completely forgot that people might start playing factory soundbank sounds and stuff at me. Um, people talking about um, uh, Drabbit streams. Drabbit streams are awesome. Unfortunately, they're a bit late in the day for me, but I tend to... I, I've caught a few on on demand afterwards, and they're well worth checking out if uh, if you've got time to, to go. Yeah, his, his stuff's awesome. Very entertaining. Much more entertaining than me. I'll, I'll give definitely say that. Um, yeah, really, really cool stuff. I love how he gets ideas down really, really quickly. Um, and yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, Busker Bills has said lightweights. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I, I am a lightweight, but um, that's that's why VODs exist, which... <laughs> Actually, I might have the high pass filter come in a bit more on that monotone there. I might 
also automate the pan spread on that on the pad in the intro. In fact, I've got a got a couple of other ideas as well. Um, I'm kind of going down the rabbit hole of uh, messing around with this intro pad. So I'd also like to change the number of notes as well. So let's let's give that a go. Let's start with just three notes. That's one thing I really like about um, essentially kind of non-linear song arrangement is because I've got the middle of this track already planned out essentially, I can just work backwards from there. So I'm already using pre-existing elements to create intro textures and that kind of thing. A really good way of working like this as well is if you have something like pole stretch, which I haven't used in a while, you can just take the middle chunk of a track, mute the drums, uh, take the bass out, then stick that into pole stretch and you end up with this really lovely texture, which is gonna sort of work with the rest of the track and it works as this kind of really nice foreshadowing of things to come. And I, I love that kind of approach to, to creating textures that you can use in the, in the start of a track. So I'm thinking those, those pops might sound a little harsh at the start. I think it's a similar problem I had last week, so. So I'm just going to create a uh, DR1 just to kind of smush those those pops at the start of the track so not quite as in your face. So let's uh, let's get that drawn in there. So what I might do here is also alter the filter frequency just so we get this kind of nice wash just there. So I'm going to start bringing in some other elements as well, like... Like some, uh, some extra percussion, that'd be nice. So I'm just going to have that filter in as well, just have the shakers filter in during that section. So that'd be quite, quite nice. And also I'm going to automate the filter frequency on the bass because I think I've just kind of left that to it there. might do is is that a terrible idea let's find out actually no that's not that's not gonna work um, if I just take the second half there I'll get a nice sort of pitch bend on the bass I'm just going to play that from the beginning, start thinking about where to go from here. One thing I do want to do is, I feel like 
The, uh, so this is actually a really good example of why you'd use the insert pre section on the on the signal path here on the SSL mixer. So if you listen to the glitchy percussion at the start, you'll hear that the reverb tail is being kind of glitched with the rest of the percussion. So if I just play that solo now, and that's that's not what I want really. So if I just turn that on, and it's not going to work because I've got this rooted in a really stupid way. <laughs> right, okay. So ignore me. This isn't a really good example. This is a terrible example that isn't actually going to work. So I'm going to, because I've used a combinator and it, this is basically how not to do it, essentially. <laughs> um, oh boy. Oh, right. It's, uh, right. Okay, this could actually work. So if I, yeah, let's, let's do this properly. I say properly, this is the least proper way of doing this. So, right. So it doesn't really make any difference. I'm just using weird routing here. So ignore everything I just said, that is totally incorrect. <laughs> So now I think I just need to start bringing in some more elements um, and have that block start from the beginning. Uh, and let's, let's have the filter on that VK to open up a bit. That's excellent timing. Monkey Plus Plus has said, I think that VK2 needs some more stank. So I've, I've opened the filter up a bit, so I'm hoping that'll do. Um, yeah, it's got some, got some ideas for you. Excellent bongos. Proximalbog3108Y says, I have a new song for you, Elvis Presley, Jailhouse Rock. Ah yes, that little known number from that up and coming artist, Elvis Presley. <laughs>
I forgot I had a snare. I should probably start using that. Could be fun to heavily sidechain the grain and give it some syncopation during that section. That's actually a really good idea. Except instead of using the kick, I might just sidechain it with an instance of pump. So we get this kind of more well, let's let's find out. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah, that was a good idea. Thank you, Monkey Plus Plus. Start bringing in the, those extra monotone notes and maybe just. I'm just going to start this again because I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. So here we go. piano in a little sooner um, and let's let's go from there lots of talks about um, some old uh, reason versions and and mod plug tracker and of all things um, yeah I used to um, I started out using pro like a version of pro tracker by Delta Force on the Atari ST which was really cool um, in some ways kind of ahead of its time because it had a you were able to um, run it at 50 kilohertz which was a really really unheard of thing at the time really even by modern standards, 50 kilohertz is kind of a weird, a weird <laughs> sample rate to work at. Um, 
uh, Maelstrom for the win. Yes, do love a bit of Maelstrom. Been a few weeks since I used that. Um, I've, I think I used that in Kiraga last. So I might have to bust that out again. Talk of, of Rebirth. Um, yeah, as far as I'm aware, Buskin Bills has, has correctly points that Roland killed Rebirth. They they basically kind of had a, a bit of an arrangement with then Propellerhead. The Propellerhead could basically use a likeness of the 303 while Roland weren't uh, creating their own software version of it. Then Roland got into making their own uh, plug-in versions of the 303 and the 808 and 909. And then they took issue with it. And uh, as far as I'm aware, Propellerhead had to stop using the likeness for Rebirth and that kind of killed it really but I think by that point it was it most have been discontinued anyway so um but yeah interesting bit of bit of trivia there <laughs> so I've just had an interesting idea regarding the piano which I'll I'll tinker with during the next section So I was thinking, one of the things I really like about Radical Piano is that you can make very quick adjustments to the to the character of the piano. And it'd be nice to automate the character from being very subdued to being more agitated as the, as the track progresses. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start with a more subdued piano sound. And it only works in steps. So I'm going to go with... So I can kind of go up during these sections here. I don't want to change the character during... Um, let's just stretch that out. Don't want to don't want to change the character too abruptly while the piano is actually playing, because um, I think that could mess with the sound. But we'll we'll see. I think I'd, I'd, I'm probably going to want to start introducing something around here. Um, in fact, uh, I might increase the velocity of these piano notes anyway, just so we can get more of that kind of agitated uh, string action going on. So if we go back to the track. This made no difference. That's kind of where I want it to go. I want it to be sound really agitated by the end of this section here. Um, so let's let's go for that. Let's let's be a little more uh, sweeping with our changes here. I think. There we go. So much just said F minor on the combinator performance, arpeggiator patch, S falls, Victoria falls, adds a cool texture. Sorry, I can't help playing along. Let's give it a go. I mean, um, I can't, I can't sort of argue with a suggestion that specific. So let's, um, let's have a look. Um, instrument patches. So we'll just go to combinator patches and where was it? Performance arpeggiator, performance patches arpeggiated, and there we. go go so let's let's stick a player in here i think it was it was f phrygian so um i'll just leave it like that for now and let's just let's just play that over the top and um let's see how that goes just gonna play an f3 Is a nice sound. Thank you very much for that suggestion. That's really cool. I like that. So let's uh, let's go with that. It'd be really cool to just have that like this really nice sort of uh, quick echo section over the top there.
Yeah, nice find, ASM. That was that was good. I like that. Right. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Right. Yeah, this I, I like that. That's a really nice patch. Good find. So I might bring that in just a little earlier there. Have that filter in just to kind of kind of tease that sort of arpeggiated sound there. So I might have, I might actually draw another block at some point around here and transition to that and then go into a bit of an ending. So I'd, I'd like to go for something around the four minute mark today. I feel like that's a, that's a good target to go for. Um, but I'm just going to listen to this from the beginning. I feel like there's some extra percussive elements I'd like to introduce, like um, some open hats or something like that. Just something to kind of give it a little bit more variation. So um, uh, Monkey Plus Plus says, I like how the piano is getting more and more pissed off. <laughs> it's it's interesting, like how the how I'm actually sort of morphing the piano sound as the track plays. Um, that's not something I've actually done in any of my stuff before, so that's uh, that's kind of quite interesting to be trying that now. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna play this from the beginning and and have a have a ponder. So I totally forgot that that extra monotone layer was coming in. I was like, but that piano isn't coming in. Just drop the drums from that last little section there, and I want to add. I do want to add some open hats to that bit there. So if I just 
uh, go back to my Evolve Free section here, go to High Hats and just have a nice open hat. Howdy. <laughs> um, and let's just, just draw those in. I can always. So you may have noticed I was doing something with the snare a second ago. Sorry, I just completely glossed over this. <laughs> so I broke out the snare, which was on channel two um, from the redrum sent that to its own line mixer device here so I could add a bit of reverb as an aux send. So I'm still getting the full dry sound of the snare, but with some reverb over the top. So on its own, it sounds like quite excessive, but in the mix, I think that that works. Um, but again, I'm working on headphones, so it might sound completely wrong. So yeah, I forgot to, to mute that at the start of the track. So what I might do is just have that muted until I need it. Save reminder, excellent, thank you for that. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna edit the automation for that and just turn that off when I want the yoga hat to come in. Yeah, Buskin Bills has said, I think the glitch needs a bit of a change up every now and then. That's really interesting because I was literally just about to do that. That's fantastic. So I was going to automate the glitchy percussion on, well, the, the evolution connected to the glitchy percussion and the other one, which was here on the organic percussion. So I feel like during that section, I want it to just increase in, in how glitched and crazy it gets, basically. Um, oh, I forgot that it did. Right, okay. Slightly irritating. I forgot that you can't draw a line on the density. Hmm, that's irksome. So, um, yeah, that is kind of annoying. So what I might do is just clear the automation there. And this is going to sound like this is going to be a really backwards way of doing this. Um, but I'm going to, I'm not going to combine that. I'm just going to edit the automation on this. I'm just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> so um, let's go to edit mode and uh, that's annoying. I'm sure there used to be a way to draw lines more easily in here. So, well, anyway, let's let's just let's just be rough with that. So let's just have that, have that turn up like that. Going old school here. Monkey Plus Plus said, I wonder if you could assign it to a combinator knob and do the automation curve from there. I was, just, I was thinking that, that's why I right clicked on it and realized that I, you can't just combine it without the actual instrument that it's attached to. And unfortunately, the instrument it's attached to is a combinator and I can't just attach it, it's, it's getting messy. <laughs> so, I mean, hmm. yeah, and I can't just drag it into the combinator because it needs to be attached to the combinator because it won't attach to the stutter edit. This is a pickle that I will have to come back to. Um, but I, I believe I'm now just stuck drawing in stuff. <laughs> Buskin Bills has said rebuild. No, I'm not rebuilding. <laughs>
So what I might do with this ARP is I might take turn the reverb down on the actual ARP itself because I feel like it's a bit much. <laughs> My mistake, Buskin Bills. He said I was thinking more shift drag. That makes much more sense, but <laughs> um, the problem is I can't I can't attach it to the stutter edit. Like there's nothing I can I can't attach it directly. I can't. Yeah, un unless I could unless I could com Yeah, you can't just combine it on its own. It needs to be attached to something, and I can't attach it to the stutter edit, which is inside a combinator. But I need to. Ah, uh, it's a pickle. <laughs> So I'm just going to create a, a second block, shockingly, um, and just kind of go with a pretty standard sort of change up here. So I'm going to go with the VK2. And once the thing is, once I've got the VK2 sorted, I can just copy and paste that into the uh, into the pad lane. So. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's pop that in there. Oh no, don't want that. <laughs> Right, so let's have three notes there. To three notes there as well. Oh, this just this does not sound right. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm in the wrong key here, so that's slightly annoying. Um, yeah, I'm not going to start messing around with that, but. Um, what I will do is just cheese it <laughs> and hope I can sort of jerry rig this into the into something usable. You know what? I could actually just draw these notes in myself. Um, There we go, the perfect crime. I'll just <laughs> keep it hanging on that one note. Fantastic. So I need to adjust these notes as well because they're wrong. wonder why I nearly uh yeah either the beers have kicked in or that's the wrong key altogether yeah I'm uh we just stick with the uh the elements I'm actually working on Let's 
just grab that. That's totally not what I meant to do. We're done here, right. I think we're, we're, we're making progress now. problem with with being too reliant on scales and chords see I could very quickly just copy and paste uh, those elements correctly in fact that's probably what I'm gonna do because I'm not really messing around with those too much here so hmm what I might do is just bounce those keys to track so I can actually modify them more quickly um, so if I just click on center track and here we go this should just pop those notes, pop them in the track, and stop using that. So here we go. Hmm, it hasn't. That's annoying. So, hmm. Oh, am I in the wrong block? No. Oh, this is strange. Let's just try that again. How odd. I wonder why that's not pasting. So it's... What? What is going on here? Right. <laughs> this is weird. Um... Hmm. Overthinking this, so um, what's good says click the instrument before you click send to track. Um, let's try that. So I've clicked the instrument, let's click on send to track, and let's see if I have any better luck this time. That's still nothing, very strange. I'm just gonna leave that for now because I, yeah, I feel like that's a, that's a whole other thing that I should mess around with some other time. Um, but I think for the most part, that's fine. I'm just gonna leave it and just crack on.
Yeah, I'm having all kinds of suggestions for uh, for what to try here. I'm probably just going to leave it for now because it's kind of annoying me. Um, apparently, direct record. I should probably turn that on. Um, also, click on that little arrow that's on. Let's just just see see why that's not working. Direct record will probably fix it. Um, let's have a look. No. No, <laughs> it just really doesn't like me. Um, so I'm I'm just going to leave that for now because it's just weird. Um, but I will. This might be something I come back to tomorrow morning when I listen back to the track. Um, it's literally just like one one or two chords I'd like to mess around with. Um, but again, like I said, this is the problem with being so reliant on scales and chords. If you make a mistake, like I have, then you're if you want to make just a manual adjustment, it's going to make it way way trickier. This is not a problem I would have had a couple of years ago before I started using scales and. Chords chords but it's great for getting ideas down um, so yeah I'm not gonna stop anytime soon but there we go So I feel like I want an extra element there and I know exactly what I'm going to bring in and it shouldn't come as a huge surprise to anyone who's been watching these streams. Um, but uh, so I'm just wondering also if that will work. So I'm just bring that in during the second section I think. So it'd be nice to have a feedback wash of or delay wash there. Bongos. I'm not bringing bongos in, <laughs> um, but that is that is quite the idea. <laughs> So the bass is just dropping out now as well. This is a fun part of the track. So right. Uh, no nasalizer, but I was going to bring in um, some little some little vocal washes because it's been a little while. I say a little while. I'm pretty sure I did it last week, but it's been a whole week. So. <laughs> Hello. I'm in reason now. So that's a start. Let's grab that, crack the pitch, um, and maybe reduce that a bit, get that in the right place. thinking I could just continue along those lines. Let's 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 give it a go. Let's give it a go.
Oh. <laughs> right. Let's crack that because that's going to be all over the place, especially the start. There we go. Monkey Plus Plus has said, do you ever try doing a more bass vocal wash? I've, I've done that in a previous stream. In fact, um, uh, if you check out, I think that, I think it's in Hail I do something like that. Um, so yeah, I'm not just restricted to doing, yes, he does that often. <laughs> um, yeah, so I am gonna, let's get that there. There we go, nice crossfade there. <laughs> gonna start rounding the track off after this point but I want something over the top there like a nice kind of pad wash kind of thing so um, <laughs> the goal is to get the nasal riser on beat um, so I'm, I, you may have noticed I haven't added any nasal riser or anything or any riser of any kind during this track just because I feel like I kind of just like the sort of steady steady flow of it as it is so I feel like it doesn't really necessarily need anything like that this time around but I'll probably listen back to it tomorrow and be like, oh yeah, should have thrown a riser in. Um, so I am going to create a Europa, I think, and just um, bring in something, bring in like a pad, um, one of my pads from here. So if I go to by device, go to Europa and just let's have a, let's have a pad. So. Um, I just kind of want to put a fair bit of better reverb on that. And I want to round, round off the lows there. So I'll just say reverb pad. Um, So let's let's just see how that goes. It's not what I'm trying to do, right? <laughs> Right, okay. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm kind of just getting to the point of the track now where I'm just throwing stuff in. So this is a clear sign that I should be rounding it off, really. 
That's a good question. So, um, when are we creating the name of the song? Just... Bring them on. Bring them on. <laughs> Just repeat that, I think. gonna filter that out to start with. Um, in fact I might... Um, I'll just leave that alone for now. Some interesting names going on here. So Static Flow, I quite like. That's a really nice title. Um, I'm not calling it Tricky Little Knob. I'm not calling it Adam's Knob. Nothing with knobs in the title. Guys, come on. <laughs> Impossible automation. I, I do like Static Flow. Um, that is that is currently my 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 pick. Um, so you know, that's gotta gotta make that Adam's new knob. No, 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 no knobs. No knobs. <laughs> So what I might do is do the reverse of what I did earlier and have the piano kind of return to what it was before. In fact, I want that to be agitated during that section anyway. Sundial is a nice name. Um, so we got Static Flow and Sundial. Those are those are both good names. realized I really wanted to open the filter up during some of these parts, um, but I couldn't because I already automated it. So what I've done is I've mapped the mod wheel to the filter frequency on the monotone. So I can just turn up the mod wheel and open up the filter.
right, so I might... I think I've opened the filter up too much there, which is slightly annoying. Did Sundial win? Nobody's won yet. It's, it's, I mean, didn't we, didn't we all really win? But Sundial is, is currently winning. <laughs> Definitely want that pad to start fading out there as well. Um, so if I can find the mix channel that's associated with this grain, which has gone completely AWOL for some reason, uh, <laughs> then I can start fading that out. Um, grain pads. I always love it when the uh, when the mix channels just become completely detached from what they're supposed to be attached to. Um, so if I just grab the pump and the grain pad and put those with the actual grain pad, I'm not entirely sure why that happens sometimes, but it does. <laughs> right, so I am going to call it Sundial. There we go. Um, yeah. that just suddenly drops. So now I'm just kind of getting things ready to, to round off basically. So from this point I want the bass to fade out. Shout out to the wife. Hi, Buskin Bills' wife, who forgot the beer this week. Ow. <laughs> so what I might do is just fade. I'm going to fade that snare out sooner as well. pass filter on that shocking let's uh let's fix that
So I might just kill that last uh, piano note there. Just really have that nice subdued character on the piano at the end there. And also um, filter out that kick at the end as well. Right. And also I need to start reducing the density of these percussive elements as well. So I totally muted the wrong channel here, but I kind of like how that ends. Um, I might have the shakers fade out before that point as well, just because I feel like I've overplayed that effect. It's kind of a nice place to end the track. Not quite four minutes, which is slightly annoying. <laughs> but, you know, worse things have happened. I should probably have the Kong fade out by that point as well. So I'm just going to automate the master level on the Kong there. The things you say during music making sessions, I'm just going to automate the master level of the Kong. As if that's a real sentence that people would say. <laughs> I might just... Yeah, that last kick is slightly annoying me. So, right, I am just going to listen to this from, <laughs> just make the tempo 105 now, bang, four minutes. I'd like to say I haven't done that before, but I'd be lying. Um, I have 100% done that before. I still say 119. I feel like that'd be a little too quick. I kind of like, I like the fact that it's, it's not slow, but it's, it's somewhere in the middle. I like that. Mid-tempo. Why, why don't I just call it mid-tempo? Right, so I am going to save that and I'm just going to listen to it from start to finish and tweak it. I'm pretty sure it will need some tweaks. So let's give that a go. Oh yeah, that's how the song starts. <laughs> I feel like those glitches at the start are already very... They're quite in your face. grain pad just kind of fade in a little bit as well there there we go it's a little less intense in fact what I might do as well just attenuate that a bit so it's a little less harsh
Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to save that as it is um, and probably just leave that there for now. Um, as always, I'll be coming back to this track tomorrow with a fresh pair of ears and not wearing headphones so I can actually make a few tweaks to it. So some really interesting questions popping up during the uh, in the chat during the listen there. Um, so yeah, um, that's kind of kind of funny. Um, uh, we had lots of knob talk again. Um, <laughs> too much in the highs. Yeah, the intro had too much going on in the highs. I think that's that's definitely something I'll probably address tomorrow. I've, I've kind of tried to tweak it a little bit now. So I've um, added a low pass filter and some other bits and bobs to the start of the track. Um, but we, I had a question from Ty Blue saying, do you think you'll release these question, these tracks made during these pandemic streams on an, on an album? It would be nice to own them all, making memories and all that. So this is something I actually addressed a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to go off on a, on a slight tangent here. Um, yes, that is absolutely something I'm working on. And so basically what happened was a few weeks ago, I had a freeform session because I had a, a meeting and I had to cut it a bit short. So I thought instead of trying to rush through a song making session, I should just sit down and just go over some stuff and talk nonsense and that kind of thing. It was a, a fun hour or so. And during that session, I, I covered a few things that I'd been thinking about, one of which was compiling the tracks I'd written up until that point into a complete album. And at that point, I'd written 12 tracks, which was about 50, 50 minutes worth of audio. So the more I've, I've actually kind of just been messing around with those 12 tracks as they are, I was planning on maybe sort of taking some tracks out or reordering them or that kind of thing. But the more I listened to them, the more they kind of grew on me as, as a series of tracks as they were written. And uh, I sent them to a friend of mine who, who sent me a message back saying, this, it's a really interesting idea because one of the cool things about this as an album is that you'd be able to essentially have a collection of like a document of how it was actually written online. So every single track as it was written is available on YouTube, which I thought was a really, really interesting hook. Um, so not only was it really satisfying to kind of sit down and work on on these tunes, but uh, but yeah, it was it was um, it was just really nice to be able to think that oh yeah, there's a document of the actual making of it available for everyone to check out. So yes, that is something that's happening, and I'm working on it. So it's like I said, it's going to be the twelve. It's going to be twelve tracks worth of stuff. So it's not going to include last week's track or this week's track. These are. <clears throat> I don't want to say say I'm starting like a new set of tracks here because as soon as I start thinking of it as a new project, I'll I probably won't be able to do anything with it. But it's. It's interesting how it's it, how it's turned out, um, and I'll, I'll probably talk a little bit about it after after the stream if anyone wants to to hang around for that. But um, so yeah, that's that's sundial. So I'm 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 not sure if I should call it sundial with a capital D or or not. Um, sundial is I might look into that. It just looks a bit weird with a with a capital D. But it's, this is just nitpicking here. It's it's called sundial. That's the name. Um, so yeah, I'm sticking sticking with that. So yes, yeah, so we got a couple of couple of tracks. So last week's track for anyone who catched it was who caught it was um, uh, Storm Approaching, which I I really like that track as well. So um, yeah. Anyway, so that's that's kind of the end of this music making session. We have a reasonably complete track here. I had some questions about uh, um, uh, about kind of how to grab the project files and stuff. So those are all in Dropbox. I will include a Dropbox link on on YouTube if uh, if anyone is what anyone watched on YouTube. I'll include a link in the description. If you're not watching on YouTube, then I will pop a link in the chat now. So you can you can grab all of my previous project files and FLAC exports and MP3s and stuff like that. So one thing is, um, if I do release everything as an album, I I am going to completely remix everything and I'm going to be making tweaks to some of the tracks. Um, so it will sound better basically. Um, so it's it's it, it's nice to actually kind of treat everything with a with a fresh perspective. But anyway, I'll talk about this this afterwards as I'm kind of rabbiting on a bit here. But um, as always, I will be going over this tune again tomorrow morning with a fresh pair of ears and make, make a few tweaks. And in a future session, I'll probably explain what I've changed and that kind of thing. But in terms of the actual arrangement, I'll probably keep it as it is. So cool, cool. If you're watching on Twitch, like I said, um, stick around and I'll have a, have a little chat afterwards. But if you're watching this on YouTube, then thanks so much for watching. And that's it for this week's uh, music making session. I will be back next week to make something different, maybe something with a bit of a, a darker feel to it, as I feel like this was a little too optimistic for my taste. So I need something to kind of rein, rein it in, you know. <laughs> so there we go. Um, after lockdown party slash documentary at uh, Drabbit's Pool. <laughs> nice. Cool. Um, awesome. Um, stick around if you're on Twitch and 
If not, then I'll see you next week. Cheers. Thanks for joining me and have an awesome weekend. Bye-bye.